This is a Smitty Mitty Show web exclusive. Welcome back to another Smitty and Mitty Show web exclusive. Joining us today is Jake Cranston from the Ending the Drought, a Bills fan podcast, uh, where they talk just about everything there is to talk about the Bills. Jake, thanks for joining us today. It's a pleasure to have you on. Yeah, thanks, guys. Appreciate you having me. We uh, So I used to play baseball, actually, down at Erie Community College. And uh, that's um, obviously, you know, blocks away from where the Bills play. And uh, I was there that year that there was like two feet of snow or like two two meters, whatever the hell that is. And like eight there. feet. Yeah. yeah, sure. And uh, and I remember going down to to the stadium and shoveling the field so the Bills could play. And I went down to a couple uh, a couple tailgates there and I went through a couple tables. And so that's where I'm going to start. How many tables have you broken in your career? Well, funny, funny thing is, is I've been tailgating since I've been, geez, probably nine years old going to Bills games. My uh, late grandfather, um, I used to spend the night at his house. He'd wake me up and do the whole nine yards. We go tailgating at 730 in the morning, you know, getting to the game, an all day affair. I I personally never have broken the table. Um, it's, it kind of started a little later than when I, you know, was into the bills, but I'm sure I'll, I'll get there. Especially if we win this game against KC, I'll, I'll be breaking a table. Hey, if, <laughs> I'll go through this table <laughs> when the game against KC, I was also yeah. down there. Uh, what was that? That must've been 16 when uh, the world juniors were down there in Canada, played the States at, at the stadium. And like, we, we uh, were purposely, we, like it was a, a seven o'clock game and we went down at, you know, 10 in the morning i was like we have to go down early and there were just bills fans that weren't going to the game but they were like there's something going on we're gonna come down and get drunk <laughs> there was just bills fans everywhere at 10 in the morning for a game they weren't even going to it was nuts oh yeah yeah it's it's a great time i've been a season ticket holder um i had season tickets during the bledsoe years so i was in my early 20s and uh, i had it for about four or five years straight then i took a little time off and then uh, I've had seasons for the last eight years. So funny thing is, uh, back when we were in the last championship game uh, against KC in 94, I was at that game. I just turned 13. Uh, so it's kind of funny that, you know, the next time we're in a championship game, it's again, uh, KC again. So I thought that was pretty cool. Not not to age you, but I was minus one years old at that time. <laughs> I was going to say, I wasn't even a blink in my parents' eyes back then. So, uh, but like you, so you've been obviously a fan for so long and you've had to, to go through quite a lot. How exciting is it for you to, to see the Bills get back to this point? Man, it's, it's huge. I mean, it, it's been so long. Um, I, when we won that first playoff game against the Colts, and I'm not going to lie, guys, I, I started tearing up and it just started rolling down my face. I, I, I couldn't help it. It's, you know, 25, 26 years of just, you know, pent up emotion finally released. Uh, so, it, it, I mean, it means the world to me. Again, I, I live 30 minutes. I'm a 30 minute drive from from Orchard Park. Um, you know, I'm in uh, Springville. So it's a nice, quick 30 minute drive. Uh, we're a small little town here and everybody and anybody is a bills fan and that's we live eat and breathe this stuff so it's it's huge how the hell was that not a fumble oh it, it was a fumble <laughs> i don't see it. i don't see how it wasn't a fumble and i got like texts all i've been i've probably been a bills fan not for too long it's been ever since i was in buffalo you know being around i'm um, just the crazy fandom and bills I, fans everywhere. yeah yeah and it was hard not to be a bills fan at that point but it <laughs> I, I don't understand how it wasn't a fumble, but the one thing I do really enjoy about the bills is just, or about this year is how much it seems like the whole country of the United States has really taken the bills and just kind of run with them as like that underdog team. And there seems to be this, this sweep of just energy down there. Yeah. Yeah. The bills mafia thing uh, just blew up big. Um, again, when in the early two thousands, we didn't, we didn't, we didn't have anything bills mafia, but you know, it started taking off and it, it's just gone huge. You know, I'm, uh, our, our ending the drought podcast. We we try to post a lot of stuff on um, you know different Bills Mafia pages, and you know there's there's hundreds and thousands of people on these Facebook groups, and it, it's just so cool to see. I mean, there's people all over the country, um, you know, that are huge Bills fans. So it, it's it's cool to see the, what we're doing. So what are you what are you thinking coming up this week? Because we were just looking at it before, 
And right now you get the bills at plus money. And I made, like, we jumped all over it, especially not knowing if Mahomes is really going to play or not. It sounds like he might, but even if he does, he's got like maybe a broken toe and he's got a concussion, like to get yeah. the bills at, it was like plus plus one forty yeah. right now or something. Take it on like, plus money. Yeah. I'm going to take that every single day. So what do you feel about this game? Yeah. Yeah. Same here. I'm definitely taking the, the, the plus money line on that. The, uh, the over under, uh, what was it 53 and a half? I think something yeah, like that. around there. Yeah. yeah. Something like that. Yeah. So that, um, I was a little, um, the other guy, Jeff, that's on our ending the drill podcast. He, he thinks we're going to be scoring 35 plus points. I'm like, well, you know, pump the brakes a little bit. It's a, cha- it's a championship game. Uh, you know, I still think that it's going to be a, a tough sled for us to win this game. So I I'm, I'm going 28, 23, uh, bills for this game. So, well, here's the problem, especially with the over, is that if Mahomes doesn't play, I can see them just handing the ball off to Edward Hilaire and trying to really control the clock. And with the Bills' run defense not being the best and, you know, a star running back in the making, I think it'll be easy for them to kind of keep the ball out of Allen's hands. And if that, if without Mahomes, I see it being a low scoring game. But if Mahomes is playing, yeah. then it's going to be a shootout. Well, I, think, so I think if you throw Mahomes in there, then you're looking at, crushing that 53 and a half over if, if Mahomes plays and uh, I think 30 plus points each side. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that, that definitely could happen. If you look at the Browns game, I know Mahomes, he was out third middle of third quarter, uh, but they only put up 22 on the Browns and you know, we're, we're playing, I think our defense is killer right now. I mean, we're playing top five football defensively. Um, so it's tough to say how much, you know, KC would put up. I mean, Mahomes is tough to stop. I, I get that. But if we if we can control, you know, Hill and Kelsey, uh, I, I'm not scared of the running game this time around at all. So yeah, that's such a I mean, that's a big task to try and control Hill and Casey. I mean, Hill is just such a he's so quick to get downfield. And then if you try and, you know, double back and, and cover him downfield, now you're you're leaving that short pass to Kelsey. That's why they're such a scary team. And I, I don't know. It, it really scares me, but I was going to take the bills anyways. And especially if Mahomes is going to play, then I mean, I try and stay away from betting on bills games because obviously you're going to be a little bit more <laughs> susceptible. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, the thing, the, the thing that I was looking at and we, we said it on the, uh, and in the drought podcast, uh, we just did ours yesterday, finish it off we always pick our offensive and uh, defensive player of the game. So for me, I didn't pick anybody specifically on defense. I, I picked the Bills secondary. Uh, I think our secondary is going to show up huge. Uh, Jordan Poyer. I mean, how did, how did the guy not get a pro bowl? You know, how, how do you not get into the pro bowl is what I want to know. You know, we got two of the best, you know, safeties in the league. Uh, Trey white has been under the radar a little bit this year, but he's still a shutdown corner. You know, and you look on the other side, Levi Wallace, Josh Norman. So I think with with what our entire secondary coming to the table with our front four uh, getting pressure finally, I think we're going to give them some trouble. I mean, you look at Miami, you know, they if we can have a game plan similar to what we did or even the Raiders when they beat them, uh, I think we got a huge shot to holding them to under under 25 points. So. What do you think the big difference was? Because the Bills defense, you know, for the first five weeks was really not spectacular. But then there's something switched. Was it just because they didn't have that training camp? They didn't have those reps? Yeah, I think, and, and I was saying that, uh, again, on a couple of different podcasts of what was going on with our defense, you know, why why Edmonds was looking rough. Um, yeah, I mean, we didn't have we didn't have the preseason. And as, as much as people say preseason – you know, doesn't matter as much or we should get rid of it. It means a whole lot, man. Four, four weeks of football, getting your body trained it, to me is big. You know, you, you, you got to get that time in. And I think our defense suffered for a good month or so to, to kind of find their, you know, their feet, so to speak. So. Yeah. And once they did, I think we, we kind of saw, like you said, there's kind of something that just clicked about, you know, week five, week six, where it was just like, Hey, this team is, you know, this team is the team we thought they were, and it's been exciting to watch. And you know what? We have a really big weekend coming up. You talked about what you thought the game was going to, you know, what was going to go down. Do you have any big plans to watch the game? Yeah. So, uh, my, my uncle is uh, a season ticket holder with me. We again, doing it for eight years. 
So we have a tradition, uh, every game we get together, he has a, a really sweet basement. Uh, it's like a bar down there. It's got big screen TVs, it's got a full bar. It's, it's probably one of the best places you can watch a football game at home. Uh, it's, it's really cool. So we're going to be at his house uh, watching the game and, and uh, partying it up. So hopefully we, we pull this one out. Yeah, enjoy that because like I need a letter just to get over here to record because we're under lockdown. So I need a lever a letter for the cops just to get here to record a show. So enjoy a couple of drinks in, in an uncle's basement. Yeah. Me. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, absolutely, guys. We do uh, every time we score a touchdown, we do a shot. So okay, that Miami right. game. Was- I'm in. I mean, you don't have, you don't have to ask twice. Yeah, okay, that's a game we can play. Yeah, yeah. I'm good at that yeah. one. Yeah, that. That Miami game, we were hurting, you know, 56 <laughs> points. If you don't remember the second half, point. it usually goes well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What do you see as you know, the big difference between Allen this year? Because, I mean, th- I think everyone has thoughts, but he went from, like, a really good prospect of a quarterback and someone that you could, you could see, the po- like, but re- had a lot of negativity towards him and a lot of things, a lot of mistakes were being made. But this year, he just, he looks incredible. Yeah. The biggest things that I noticed was Brian Dayball was finally able to open up the offense the way he wants to run it. And I think Josh in his third year, you know, he was like, listen, you know, we, we need to see what, what Josh can really bring us in our third year of, of football to this team. So not only did Josh progress in this offense, but I mean, Dayball is, is he's, he's a great coordinator. He, he calls, a lot of good plays based on matchup. And I think he really helped out Josh tremendously on what he was calling. So not only, not only that, but dude, Josh, I mean, he's, he's, he matured big, you know, he, he cut down the mistakes. He, he was able to, you know, kind of freelance the offense a little more. Um, and he, he just, he found his own, he, he had a big year. So Let's not forget how much of a difference Diggs really made. I mean, it when you get, I mean, when you're six foot four or whatever the hell he is, and you scramble out of the pocket, you have that option to, to you know, run with the ball, and he's a very good runner with the football. But on top of that, you got Diggs who's scrambling downfield, who's very good at finding separation on a broken play, and then when you throw it up to him, he has the ability to get that ball. So I, I do think Diggs you know, has made a huge difference in this offense. Yeah, yeah, Diggs has been huge. I mean, uh, we all saw that he broke Eric Mould's record, you know, for the season. Um, yeah, he's he's tremendous. If if we didn't have him this year, it, it'd probably be a different story. Josh still would have been really good. Uh, then obviously you got to add in Cole Beasley had his best year as a pro, and uh, Gabe Davis. I mean, what a find! I mean, he played he played some really good games for for a rookie. Um, so, yeah, we got a really good spread of four wide receivers. And Dawson Knox came on finally after <laughs> I don't know how many times we were beating him up about not being able to all cylinders, which is awesome to see. So, well, Jake, we thank you for uh, oh, for coming man. on and joining us today. Uh, so, why don't you go ahead and tell our fans where they can listen to your podcast? Yeah, so if you go to uh, Anchor.fm forward slash Ending the Drought, uh, we post our uh, podcast on Facebook. So you can go to our Facebook page, uh, ETD, uh, Buffalo. Uh, and then you can also see us right on Twitter as well. We post all our podcasts on there. So. Yeah. So check them out on, uh, on all the social media platforms, check out the Smitty Mitty show on, uh, on all your social media platforms as well. Jake, we, uh, we really thank you for coming here and hopefully we'll get to talk again leading up to a, a bill Super Bowl. Yeah, guys, it's a pleasure. I appreciate you having me. And uh, we always say, and on the uh, Ending the Drought podcast, where else would you rather be than right here, right now? Go Bills.